got very good arms. He didn't fall? Inconceivable! You keep using the word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Welcome back to Thank You Critical. This is Wes. And, you know, during Dan Didio's tenure at DC Comics, he was well known for not loving legacy characters. And normally when you, when you saw his little hit list, you definitely saw Nightwing on there. You saw Wally West, maybe even Superman's family. Don't know if that's a legacy character, but it's certainly weird to see that on a grown man's hit list of comic characters who wanted to kill off. But there's another character out there that he definitely did not like. He's a legacy character. And Dan Didio did everything he could in his power to just destroy this character over and over and over again. His name is Roy Harper. He is known affectionately now as, or he was known, he's no longer with us as, <laughs> Arsenal, and here with me to talk about this is my good friend from Fantastic Comics, Yul Carter. How you doing? I'm I'm wonderful. I'm doing a lot better than Roy Harper. Let's just say that everybody's doing better than Roy Harper. He's a he's a struggling. I do want to say this before we get into the dirty details of what's happened to old Roy. If you are enjoying the channel and you haven't subscribed, it's time to it's time to take the leap. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. If you enjoy this conversation about Roy Harper, give us a thumbs up. If you love Roy Harper and think we got it totally wrong, and maybe we we uh, we're we're sandbagging Dan Didio here when it's not really him, give us an enormous thumbs down and straighten us out in the comment section. We love hearing uh, feedback from you guys. And if you enjoy Yul Carter, he does have his own YouTube channel. There's a link in the video description. And in the last 30 seconds or so of the video, you can go over and subscribe to his channel that way as well. All right, Yul. So everybody knows about Nightwing. You know, he's always trying to kill off Dick Grayson because it makes it look like Batman's old. Now that Nightwing is a grown man, you know, in his, his mid-20s, 30s, obviously he 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 hates Wally West. You know, just all the mm -hmm. stuff that he had, you know, had, had happened to Wally West, you know, in uh, Heroes in Crisis. But one of the things that he did in Heroes in Crisis was he uh, just unceremoniously killed off-panel a great character, Roy Harper Arsenal, He's on the, you know, he's just dead. You don't even, you don't even get to see it. That's how little he meant to Dan Didio, Tom King, when they decided to kill him off. But this isn't the first time they decided to screw over uh, Roy Harper, affectionately known as Arsenal. Of course, in the past, he was known as Speedy when he was part of one of probably the more, more most controversial, well-known comic book story arcs in the history of DC Comics. That's right. Poor, poor Roy was a junkie. Uh, Green Arrow, this super liberal uh, superhero who knows everything about everybody and the way things are really going on in the world. And he's like showing it to Hal Jordan when they go home <laughs> to get to Green Arrow's house. They're like, oh, damn, Speedy's a junkie. <laughs> uh, oh, all of a sudden you don't know anything about your your uh, your ward, do, do you, uh, Green Arrow. <laughs> and yeah, so that was the first time uh, Roy Harper uh, was, you know, he had a an emotional, a powerful issue or story uh, around him. This is probably the last time it was one of the good things because although it, it, sh it shaped him as a character, it's something that he always was trying to get past. And as a result, we found out that he had a lot of things that he did when he was using and abusing drugs over the course of his lifetime. And, you know, some good things actually came from that. But when Dan Didio came in, <laughs> he went about to, like, undo all of that. So, you know, since I've been reading, Roy Harper Arsenal hasn't been, like, an enormous part of DC Comics. Obviously, he's been in Titans here and there. And, uh, you know, you, you see him. He is part of one of my favorite, you know, modern DC Comics, like, single issues ever. It's Nightwing 43. It's basically Nightwing, Arsenal, and Damian Wayne Robin, like, going out and kind of uh, trying to solve this thing. It's a one-shot. I think Michael Morrissey is the is the writer. And it's just such a wonderful team. I remember reading it. I was like, I would kill for, like, a, a team-up book of just these three. Arsenal and um, and Damian really look up to Nightwing. And he's, it was a really good team dynamic. And I was like, man, I'd, I'd really like this character. I'd like to, to know more about him. And not very long after, obviously, they killed him off, but – you, know, you told you know, we were talking about Roy Harper. You're like, man, this guy's been getting it bad for a long time. Like, did they like murder off family members? Yeah, they did. Um, it was the pre so I joke it at the store and call it the pre New Fifty Two. So it's everything prior to New Fifty Two, 
And there was a storyline, I think it was called Cry for Justice, where Roy, his daughter gets killed. This is like his uh, um, his uh, his bastard child from when he was a drug user. I think it was, oh, I can't remember who his wife or his girlfriend was at the time. Some killer chick. Um, <laughs> this is my brain not working. Uh, and yeah, his, his child was killed. I think he had like an arm severed, maybe both of them. They were, you know, he, he got a leg cut off. He basically almost died. And then of course, he's a multiple amputee and he lost his child in the same event. I think it was in the same event and it was all, it it was, I couldn't read all of that. It was just so depressing. What was going on? Did Tom King write that? No, I think it was JT Cruel or Kroll. And I could be wrong, but I think that was who the writer was. I'm just going off on memory. I'm, I don't try not to Wikipedia all this stuff beforehand so that you get a like a, you know, a fresh take on what I remember from all this. But yeah, he he was Roy Harper was being done dirty back then. I mean, a death actually off panel is not a it's like a it might not up. be the worst thing. Yeah, it's like <laughs> thank you for for sparing me. Like, yeah, that's that's rough. You know, to lose multiple appendages, lose a child. Yeah, uh, and the child and that that relationship had been built up quite a bit over the last couple of years. Like you know, uh, she was not just a an ancillary character; it was a very important person in his life, and it really sucked to see that happen. You know, sometimes. You know, you never really believe the kid is going to die if their their life is threatened. So, you know, there are times when you might want to do something like that to make a story, you know, more Yeah, impactful. like Spider-Man with Gwen Stacy, that 120, 121, 123? Yeah, something like that. It's one of those. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's a, huge, that's a huge, bold move to go in there and you take the love of, you know, the, the love of the life of, of the main hero character and take them away. Obviously, he'd already lost his, his uncle at that point. That's a huge loss, but it, it that creates character development or opportunities for it. But what are you you're talking losing multiple limbs and you're in a child? Yeah. Yeah. I can good. see it being used in a an appropriate way to build a character up if you really wanted to move him forward and establish something new about him, but it doesn't gonna, really feel like that's, that's what really happened. Well, well, how do you elevate an archer with no arms? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like Jesus. Well, he only had one leg, too. He couldn't use both feet, to. I mean, all the things that you knew about him were being stripped away from him. I mean, the only thing he didn't do was use drugs again. Probably the one thing that would have been acceptable. <laughs> um, but, yeah. When he, the new- did, he did have relapses afterwards. It's not like he yeah. never dabbled in the, mm-hmm. in, the, in the drug trade again. No, he's always a user. And, you know, there were stories, I think... Anyway, going back to that story that you were oh, talking about. No, no, no. I want to I want to talk about what you're talking about, that one story with Nightwing and Damien and Roy. Oh yeah. That's the that is what you get from legacy characters. You know, you you get uh you get pieces of Batman, you get pieces of Green Arrow. And not only that, you have these guys that are adding to the story. And it, it's it's a, a relationship that's been you know forged beforehand that's being explored now. I think DC got so into Batman and so into the universe that they forget that the Silver Age started with brand new Green Lantern, brand new Flash, you know? Granted, Batman was still Batman, but these were not the same old characters from before. And Nightwing, maybe it's time, you know, just to get rid of Batman. (laughs) I know financially it might be scary, but Nightwing played Batman. You know, Dick Grayson. I would did. love a, yeah. a, a rehash. Well, not a rehash, but new stories of Dick Grayson as Nightwing with Damian Wayne as Robin, because them as night as Batman and Robin are actually amazing together. I could, if that is an Elseworlds or something like that, I would absolutely, I would buy that. Oh so yeah, it's a just it's it's an interesting take on Batman. It's a different version of him. Yeah, it allows you to do different things with the character, and and that's what you do when you finally just kind of like de- let your characters age out. Don't be so scared of that Dan Didio. Probably when he was saying something like that was when that whole conversation about Batman sitting down. Oh, you should never have Batman sitting down. Well, what about when he's at the Bat Computer? What about when he's in a car? You know, he's always sitting down. But it, it, Dan Didio has got some real specific things that he doesn't like. It feels very Vince McMahon sometimes. 
Like, don't it's use weird strap. That he, he, did, he disliked Roy Harper Arsenal so much, but he did, he still didn't even make the hit list. He wasn't even on the big list. He just – it was just something he was going to do. It didn't even make the top ten. Like I, I assume he never liked that character. It probably started with the drug use or something like that. He was like, this character has always been bottom of the barrel. And you know what? I'm going to prove it. <laughs> I think it's weird how, uh, like in comic books, a, a character can never really come overcome like, um, well, I'm sure there have been some, but a lot of times a character can't overcome that kind of a uh, flaw or that kind of event. Like they're, they're always rehashing Tony Stark's an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. You know, Arsenal can never be a recovered drug addict that talks about his experiences and, and how hard it is. He's always got a relapse. Uh, or at and, least uh, have a story where someone suspects that you relapsed or something like that mm-hmm. also. Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, it's Because it's at those... some point, if you keep relapsing, the other heroes around you that allow you to keep being a superhero, like they're part of the problem. They shouldn't be letting you go out. Like you're a right. danger to society if you if at any moment you could have a drug relapse and be going out there bombed off on heroin. Oh, you know, as far as like Tony Stark, uh, Thor is probably the biggest enabler for him to drink. <laughs> oh, yeah, with his, uh, his ale. <laughs> I don't know who in the DC universe is shooting up with uh, Roy, but someone's an enabler for him for sure. <laughs> but, and then, you know, we get to the um, the heroes in crisis when we see when he's in there and he's he has that goodbye with them. Um, with Jason Todd, I believe it was in a Red Hood annual. It was a sad moment, you know. He's he's talking about he's had a relapse and he's ha- he's having a hard time dealing with it. And I I need to go to a place to where I can get healed, and that's why he goes to um, Sanctuary to see him go back there. And then you knew what was going to happen. We kind of knew what what Tom King was going to do there, <clears throat> and you you think maybe um, Roy Harper is going to go out on his shield, go out in a blaze of glory. Absolutely not. He's just part of the body count because that's just what the character doesn't mean to the people over at DC or at least to Dan Didio when he's in charge. He certainly didn't mean anything to Tom King just to kill him off like that. Just like Wally West is just a piece of meat, just make him turn him into a serial killer or a mass murderer, you know, in one fell swoop because he got overwhelmed with emotion is changes the whole dynamic of the speed force. He's always got to control the speed force, but if, if he's overwhelmed with emotion, he might become a nuclear bomb. And just kill him around him. It, it made no sense, you know, within the continuity of what we know about these things. Uh, but just seeing him killed off off char- or off panel by Wally West, another legacy character that they certainly had a long history together. Um, yeah, it's pretty God, pathetic. It just really leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Do you remember the uh, X Men Three movie where uh, the first Dark Phoenix that they did? They killed Cyclops off screen. And anytime I'm ragging on that movie, that's the first thing I say. We're talking about Cyclops being killed off screen. We're talking about Wally West, very good friend, who he kills, Roy Harper, being killed off panel. What the hell? It's like, uh, I don't know, maybe... There is a panel where he's holding his dead prone body, but... Yeah, but I don't know. If you're going to have something impactful, as, as, as impactful as Wally West killing his friend, Regardless if you like it or not, I think you should show it. It should be, it should be an emotional moment. It's like when uh, oh, I shouldn't say that. Spoilers. <laughs> it's like when uh, a, a character kills someone, like we're talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want to say anything else. Uh, yeah. but... <laughs> but it's just too bad, you know. Like I said, Nightwing normally gets a lot of the spotlight as far as what Dan Didio is trying to do to destroy legacy characters. Certainly Wally West and what happened to him in Heroes in Crisis after being the, the symbol of hope in DC Comics Rebirth. Just he and Tom King just took an enormous shit right <laughs> on Jeff John's creation and everything that a lot of DC Comics uh, fans and even Marvel fans came over to DC Comics as an alternative. And what they bought into was like, ha, you bought into this. Here's your, your shit dinner. Eat it. You know what I mean? And uh, Roy Harper being killed off panel is a big part of that. But They've been destroying the character for a long time, even though yeah. he was part of like a, a kind of a seminal moment in comic book history, a superhero being a junkie and having to overcome that demon to, 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 to deal with addiction. But he's, I don't know, I guess it just tamed the character forever. I think I can I can see a, a a story, a sanctuary story, if it was maybe the first time he was speedy 
and he used junk or maybe one or two of his relapses, but he had yet another relapse. Oh, so many years later. I mean, he hangs out with Starfire and Red Hood. I mean, he's probably got some <laughs> alien junk he's using at least. You know, <laughs> um, I don't know. It's ridiculous. It, 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 it yeah. It's it, it seems like it was always Didio. It that was what I've always heard, but that was just conjecture in the store. But it always seems that it's the conjecture of everybody in every store or you know internet and stuff like that. Didio's had a hard on to kill these characters or at least debase them. And Roy Harper probably was number one, even though, you know, but on the down low. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you didn't even get the, you know, people don't even have the outrage that they do for some of the other characters, but to, to, re to remove the man's appendages while taking away his daughter. So you've oh. taken away his superhero power of being a, a, one of the world's greatest archers and you've taken, taken away a child in it in the same story arc. This terrible. All right, Yule. That I don't want to be depressed for the rest of my life, so I'm gonna to have to stop talking about this one here. But you know, it was an interesting conversation. I will be having Josh on the channel here in another day or two. We're gonna be talking about Rick Grayson and some of the things that have happened to Nightwing. A little bit different tone on that conversation. Uh, thank you for joining me today. And like I said, if you enjoy what Yule Carter brought to the table, the man loves comics, loves talking about comics. He has his own YouTube channel. You can subscribe to his channel by clicking on the logo. It should be up here in a few seconds. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.